Alright everybody, hello, my name is Matthew Marvin, I also go by the Poker Gypsy. In this video I'm going to discuss what tournaments I go for, how to select what tournaments to play, and why you don't see me play tournaments, why I'm predominantly a cash game player. If you're a recreational player, you really don't have to watch this video. You can, I appreciate it, but if you're considering going a full-time pro, if you're considering of quitting your job and doing poker, tournament poker, full time watch this video you gotta know this math or else it'll kill you so recently I popped into a casino that I haven't been to in a while just to play a random tournament just to get back in the swing of things small buy-in for a freeze out tournament basically worst case scenario I blow a little 150 bucks All right, so for me, I prefer to get the most amount of chips combined with the longest blind time. I like deep stacks. Now, some people may argue, oh, deep stacks are for the weaker players. Well, guess what? If that's the case, deep stacks attract a lot of weaker players. The only thing I wasn't too thrilled about in this tournament was that the Annies started at level two. Now I'm going to take a second to pause it right here and say if you are a tournament player, you need to analyze your game. You need to know some numbers. What numbers, you ask? Well, your cash percentages. And you need to know your cash percentages based on how many opponents you're playing against. Big field, small field, medium field. So for me, in like the daily tournaments, the tournaments that are like 30 people and below, my cash percentage is 50%. 30 to 50 opponents then my cash percentage drops down to about 30 percent 50 to 100 I drop down 20 percent and anything above 100 and the crazy part is it doesn't matter whether it's 1500 people or 5000 people at that range my cash percentage is 10 percent so these are some averages you need to know now if you are a US citizen or live in another country that makes you pay taxes on your gambling winnings you need to know the tax percent dun, dun, dun. so why I don't play tournaments well because I am a US citizen automatically they're gonna take about 35 percent also I'm on child support if my child's mother gets word that I won a big tournament I guarantee you that's another 15 percent being taken if you do the math I'm already at a 50 50 split that's backer numbers, and I'm bankrolling myself. I'm not taking that bet. So, I could play tournaments and do the 50-50 split, or I could just stick to cash games. And hypothetically, if I ever did make money from poker cash games, I could just put it in a safe and bury it. Nobody would know. So for me, let's say I'm playing in that range of 100 to 5,000 players. I'm only going to cash 10% of the time. Therefore, the minimum cash has to be at least 20 times my buy-in in order for me to even make 10%. Let's look at some math. Now remember, I'm only going to cash on these tournaments 10% of the time. Let's say the buy-in is $200. We're going to all agree that this one buy-in is 10% of 2,000, yes? Now since both the tax man and my child's mother is gonna take half of whatever I make, I pretty much need to double this to break even, yes? So in order for me to break close to even, after taxes, maybe a 10% gain in there. <laughs> I need to turn that $200 into $4,000. So that would be 20 times the buy-in. 
And this is all math based on just single bullets. So let's go do some more practice math. Let's go back to that tournament I told y'all went to recently. Which, by the way, I busted out of. Spoiler alert. Was it really worth it? So, 46 players signed up for this thing. That brings me in the 30% caching range. But let's keep it simple for the sake of math, okay? Let's say I got a 33.33333333% of caching. Or, one out of every three. So for every $450 I invest, I should be able to cash at least once. Oh, but don't forget, everything I make, I gotta take half away. Because I gotta pay the IRS, gotta pay child support. So I need to be making double. I need to turn that $150 into $900. Let's look at that payout again. So in order for me to profit on this tournament, I got to get at least first or second. So in my opinion, no. Playing this tournament wasn't really worth it. Like I said, I just came to get in this thing to get back in the groove. A little bit of practice. And I think I finished like 16th or 17th. So, didn't cash. Could have done worse. Anybody who tells you that they could just sit down and just win every tournament, cash every tournament, they're lying. So make sure you know this math. I hope that this has helped somebody out there today. And the numbers I gave you are my numbers. I never said I was the greatest tournament poker player. I never said that you can't go out there and get better numbers than what I get. So just be careful. You can't play every tournament and win money in the long run. And for a lot of you guys that play WSOP, if you're as good as me, then you know you cash 10% of the time. Understand, the main event only happens once every year. So if I play for the next 20 years, probably only going to cash two times. Yeah, I know Mike Sexton cashed every WSOP he played. I'm not Mike Sexton. I doubt you are either. See you guys on the felt.